This Civic Media Podcast is sponsored by UW Organ and Tissue Donation. Organ donations are desperately needed, and now is the right time to become an organ donor. Talk to your family. Get the dot. Save lives. Go to HeroicDeed.com. For WRCE 107.7, I'm Joanne Krulotz. There have been 72 wildfires across Wisconsin in the past week, burning a total of 925 acres. Most of them were started by equipment like mowing operations, recreational vehicles, and more. But burning debris, even when it's been banned, still has been happening. Don't do it. One spark, even as small as a cigarette butt, can start a fire. With high winds and dry conditions, the fire danger is high for Richland and surrounding counties. We need more rain, and the drought conditions are only worsening. Currently, 64% of the state is in a drought, with 20% at severe status. UW President Jay Rothman toured UW La Crosse Tuesday to hear feedback on campus needs and priorities. Rothman said the number one thing that he's heard from all UW schools is about funding from the state legislature. UW is asking for $850 million out of the state surplus funds to help balance budgets across the state. Multiple branch campuses have been closed and dozens of employees have been laid off as universities grapple with rising costs. For UWL, one priority is funding the Prairie Springs Science Center. A traffic stop near Arena led to two people being taken into custody. Tuesday night, around 6.50, the Iowa County Sheriff's deputies conducted a traffic stop on U.S. Highway 14 and County Road C. As a result of the stop, Michael Perkins, 46 of Muscaday, was arrested on charges of possession with intent to deliver amphetamines, resisting or obstructing an officer, possession of drug paraphernalia for the manufacture of methamphetamine, four counts of felony bail jumping, and possession of THC. Michelle Olson, 46 of Muscaday, was arrested on charges of possession of drug paraphernalia for the manufacture of methamphetamine, possession of THC, possession with intent to deliver amphetamines, resisting or obstructing an officer, and two counts of felony bail jumping. Nonprofit organizations, businesses, schools, and local government agencies located in and serving Richland County and its residents are eligible to apply for grant funding to support prevention, treatment, and recovery related to the opioid epidemic. Funding can be requested by completing an application and submitting it to the attention of the Director of Richland County Health and Human Services by 4.30 Monday. Applications will be reviewed at the Health and Community Services Committee meeting November 7th at 9.30. All applicants are required to be present at the meeting. A final review and approval by the Richland County Board of Supervisors will occur on December 10th. The Department of Workforce Development encourages employers to apply for the latest Wisconsin Fast Forward grant by October 28th. Companies of all types and sizes across Wisconsin are eligible for the funding to train skilled workers. The Wisconsin Fast Forward program helps employers develop innovative local and regional solutions that meet their area's workforce needs. These industry sectors worker training grants reimburse customized occupational training costs for unemployed, underemployed, and existing workers. Training that qualifies workers for full-time employment, higher-level employment, or increased wages can be reimbursed through grants of $5,000 to $400,000. Eligible applicants include public agencies, private organizations in all industry sectors, a consortium of placement partners with the lead public or private organization serving as the applicant, and tribal governing bodies of a federally recognized tribe or band of Native Americans, or an organization appointed by the tribal governing body. More information and instructions to apply can be found at the Wisconsin Fast Forward Program. The deadline to apply is 3 o'clock Monday afternoon, October 28th. Wildfire danger around Wisconsin is high to very high. Catherine Cooley is the DNR's wildfire prevention specialist. She notes many people are preparing their properties for the upcoming deer season. So we're seeing a have an uptick in the number of equipment fires right now. Folks are operating, you know, chainsaws and UTVs and using lawnmowers. And these are causing some sparks or these hot exhaust systems. And they're happening kind of in more remote areas, more natural areas. And they're kind of sneaking around and we don't, we're not getting to them because we don't know that they're happening. And then they kind of evolve into, into larger fires. Exhaust sparks can easily start a fire in dry grass and brush. Cooley says there are steps you can take to lessen the risk of starting a fire. We typically have lesser winds and higher humidity in the morning or late in the evening. So, you know, if you could try to avoid 
operating equipment in the peak of that fire day. So kind of that one to four o'clock is really when we really see the winds really gusting and that humidity kind of bottom out. You don't have a fire extinguisher handy or water source. For the most current fire danger situation, search Whisburn on the DNR webpage. The newest train route to go through Wisconsin has hit a big milestone, less than six months in. Here's Savannah Tomei Olson. The new Amtrak line that just launched earlier this year has already had 100,000 riders. The Borealis line goes from Minneapolis-St. Paul to Chicago with stops throughout Wisconsin. La Crosse, Toma, Wisconsin Dells, Portage, Columbus, Milwaukee, and Sturdivant. People riding on the Borealis line today got a free drink and a 100 grand bar to celebrate the milestone. Now that the route is in operation, it's the first time in 46 years two trains leave from the cities to Chicago every day. The Borealis Line just launched in May of this year. Consumers are gearing up to celebrate Halloween. Total Halloween spending is expected to reach $11.6 billion, according to the National Retail Federation's annual survey conducted by Prosper Insights and Analytics. 72% of people will participate in Halloween-related activities this year. Those numbers can seem daunting for a single day, especially when watching the family budget. However, there are ways to keep the fun stylish and on budget. Better Business Bureau recommends the following tips this Halloween. Look around your home. Check your closet. There are probably hidden surprises to help you throw together a killer costume. If the idea of spending money on buying a costume isn't quite appealing because you only wear it once, consider renting. Renting a costume leaves room in the budget. Research rental companies through the Better Business Bureau at BBB.org. Buy in bulk. It may seem counterintuitive, but buying more can save you money. Factory wrapped candy will last a long time, even if you have leftovers. Always check the return policy. Seasonal shops carry unique items for a short period in a temporary location or online. When shopping for a seasonal vendor, understand the store's return policy before purchasing. Remember, buying a bunch of stuff with the intent of simply returning it after October 31st is considered fraud. When shopping from an online website, the first step is ensuring the URL starts with HTTPS and includes a lock symbol. The S in HTTPS stands for secure. If you decide Decide to shop from a seasonal store, ask whether or not they will be open after the holiday, how long they plan to stay open, and if they will accept returns after Halloween. If they plan to close up shop on November 1st or refuse returns after, either consider shopping elsewhere or take more time to be sure that item is exactly what you want before making the purchase. For WRCE News, I'm Joanne Krulotz. <laughs> The Bucks win on the road. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with Sports. NBA, the Bucks won their season opener in Philly, 124 to 109. Did they get a break since the 76ers Paul George and Joel Embiid were both out with knee injuries? Doc Rivers. No, I mean, we didn't have Chris, you know, which is one of our key guys. But we're not worried about the opponent right now, honestly. We're more worried about how we play. The Bucks host the Bulls tomorrow night. College football, the Badgers host number three ranked Penn State Saturday night. Luke Fickle on facing that tough Nittany Lions defensive front. They're going to move all around. They've got really, really good athletes. I think, obviously, that's where they're, the strength of their team is. NFL, Matt LaFleur inviting his close friend and former Jets head coach Robert Sala to practice. Will Sala be joining the coaching staff? It's it's pretty fluid. You know, I think it's important for him to spend time, obviously, with his family. So he's staying through Thursday and going back on Friday. The Packers play the Jaguars in Jacksonville Sunday. With sports, I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. On this last weekend before Halloween, you'll have several good thrillers to choose from, including a couple new releases. Let's start with Conclave, a murder mystery set in the Vatican, when the church hierarchy gathers to select the new pope. The film stars Ralph Fiennes and is pulling a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes, and it's rated PG. I didn't think they made PG films anymore. And if you're in the mood for a sci-fi Marvel film, check out Venom, The Last Dance, starring Tom Hardy. This is the final film in the Venom trilogy, but beware, it has not been made available to critics before opening night. There are also a host of scary flicks still in the theaters, including Smile 2, Terrifier 3, and Beetlejuice Beetlejuice. And if you're lucky enough to live in a city showing the animated Memoir of a Snail, it might be worth a look. Although animated, it is rated R and is considered an Oscar contender for Best Animated Feature. Memoir of a Snail is currently pulling a 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Let's go to the movies. 
Stephen King's novel Carrie is about to hit the little screen. Prime Video has announced that Mike Flanagan will turn King's novel into an eight-episode series. Flanagan has worked on other King stories, including Dr. Sleep, which was the sequel to The Shining. Carrie is the novel that put King on the map back in 1974. It was turned into a feature film in 1976. It's a great time of year to check out anything by Stephen King. In addition to horror films, there have been a slew of animated films released this year that impressed both critics and theater owners. IndieWire just released its Oscar predictions for Best Animated Feature, and Pixar Disney's Inside Out 2 is the odds-on favorite for Best Picture. The film made $1.6 billion worldwide. It is the highest-grossing animation film of all time. Other contenders include DreamWorks' The Wild Robot and Sideshow's Flow. Great recommendations for this weekend if you're done with the scares. Actress Zoe Saldana takes her craft seriously. How seriously? She told Variety that she wanted to go back and reshoot Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame because she says now she totally understands her character, Gamora's arc, better. She says she knows it can't happen, but she wishes she could because now she has a better grasp on what directors the Russo brothers had in mind. Ouch. I love Zoe Saldana, but maybe you do a little more homework next time before you hit the screen for two multi-million dollar films. Saldana played the same role in the Guardians of the Galaxy films as well. Netflix has announced there will be a season two of the A24 show Beef. The Hollywood Reporter says season two will focus on a young couple who witnesses a fight between their boss and his wife and will star the outstanding Carrie Mulligan and Oscar Isaacson. Season one, starring Stephen Yun and Ali Wong, took home eight Emmys. Isaacson and Mulligan worked together previously in the Coen Brothers film Inside Lewin Davis. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Peach Waba. Weeknights from 6 to 8 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. With your forecast, I'm Corey Hartman. Mostly cloudy today. Highs in the mid-60s. For tonight, some showers and thunderstorms possible. Lows around 47. On Friday, mostly sunny. A high near 60. Friday night, clear skies. We drop to 32. For Saturday, sunny and 58. Right now, it's 32. The national news cycle never stops. But it can be hard to find news about your local community. Civic Media is dedicated to providing quality local and state news coverage across Wisconsin. With the Civic Media app, you can get notifications about local stories that matter to you and your community. Find the free Civic Media app in your phone's app store and choose notifications from the menu to tell us what kind of news you want to hear about. 